show it. Show it. I will. The tears, the bits that you may be ashamed of, do it here. This is your new home. I'm your new mommy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sonique. Hi. Now, I gotta say, the elimination between you and Morgan was one of the toughest I've ever done because you were both incredible. Thank you. Thank Did you. I get it right, though? I actually, I don't know. I, I thought I was prepared and everything like that, and I've learned so much more about myself and about my drag and everything, but I, I felt like the whole time I was here, I was in a dream. Was it a sweet dream or a beautiful nightmare for you? My mind was always somewhere else. Like, where else? What are you talking about? I don't really feel that people got a chance to get to know who Sonique is. And I, I've heard that there's something you want to share with us uh, concerning that. I don't know. I was always just so... Um, it's very personal, and I, I don't want to... Can I we'll check give on? her a moment? I know that you don't understand. And that's, and that's the reason why I've been right. so unhappy for so long. Hey, kiddo, you okay? What is it, honey? Talk to me. I haven't been happy for a really long time in my life, and I never understood why. I just had to be honest with myself, and I, I'm a woman. I'm not a boy who dresses up. The, I feel like the only thing I ever done right was go to a doctor and start transitioning. I've never oh. been more happier in my entire life. Good. Okay, you, would you join the group again? Yeah. Maybe we can talk a little bit about it. I'm proud of you. Come on, baby. Thank you. I'm so happy. How's my makeup look? Destroyed. Don't do that to me. All right, ladies, Sonique is back. Do you feel safe to share something with the group? I always knew that there wasn't something right. I could not never be boy enough. I've always been a girl. I've always been a girl trapped in a boy's body. I started doing drag, and there's just something about it that wasn't enough. And I, I went to a doctor, and he put me on testosterone blockers and then moved me to hormones, and my levels are even, and I've never been happier in my whole life. Well, I know a lot of people get it confused what a transsexual is and what... There's a line between drag and trans transgender. Most transgender girls do not do drag. You know, they want to live their life solely as a woman. Where drag queens want to get out of drag and be a man. When I go home, I, ne I dread taking off my makeup. Listen, I'm so happy and proud of you for being so courageous, because I know how hard that is. You know, I, I'm a man, I do drag, and that's what I do for work. But for, for you to make this realization, to be happy performing, but also to clarify, not only for all of us, but for yourself, I applaud you, and I think it's, it's so courageous. And you have our support, this family here, forever, anytime. Monica Beverly Hughes! Jiggly's probably one of the biggest characters, and you let that completely go away. Also, in your runway as well, I don't know, maybe you're sad today or it's a hard day. You're kind of disconnected. Monica, tell me, what's on your mind? <laughs> it's true what you're saying. There is a lot going through my head. I feel I'm not here. <laughs> I've just been holding a secret in and been trying so hard. And what secret? I'm not just a drag queen. I'm a transgendered woman. Ever since I got here, I've been lying to myself and to other people. <laughs> I'm a transgender woman. The only way I'm going to be able to give 100% if I come clean. I feel like I'm not being myself. <laughs> Every day is hard. I invited you here because you were fierce. You deserve to be here, and that's why you're here. You have to believe in yourself, and the only person who does not believe is you. Stay strong, Monica Beverly Hills. I will. I think she's here now. I think you're here too. It felt good to say that.
Monica has been through everything. Right now, she's my hero. She's the strongest girl in this competition. Got milk. Was born a girl, baby. Oh my God. I wrote, I'm born a girl, and I haven't talked to these bitches about it. So I did not know that I was going to have to have all these girls hear about my gender situation before I can even talk to them. Uh, do you, like, know what you're gonna do during the... <laughs> <laughs> not really. I'm just a deer in headlights right now, basically. I just can't even seem to talk, which is very unlike me. I don't know what's going through their heads. I shouldn't even be focusing on that. Like, who cares? But we have to perform this tomorrow. What the f are you gonna do, bitch? Hey, Mick, how are you feeling about your, your performance? Uh, a little better today. I was, like, really so stressed yesterday. Like, had you guys all dancing to, like, talking about how I'm a girl, and it was, like, to me. I feel like I base all my lyrics about my gender situation, and I haven't even talked to you guys about me being a transgender guy drag queen. Like, I was just gagged. Like, my gender dysphoria, like, took over my soul, which so isn't like me, too. Yeah. Because I usually don't give a f I just couldn't even take in any of the choreo at first, because it was just, like, it was so intense. Like, I was, like, couldn't oh. breathe about it. Like, thank you for sharing that with us. And you're, like, you're changing the shape of drag. Like, this is, this is big. Thank God I feel a little better today about it, because that was a moment, but, yeah. Got Nick. You gave us permission to show this childhood photo. Yeah. <laughs> what do you have to say to your two-year-old self? Hi, Cade. That's your name now. Get into it. Um, <laughs> you know, there's one side of you that just loves laughing and life. And then there's another side that just feels like you just don't fit in. And you just need to realize that you have to live your truth. And the second you trust that you know who you are, your whole life is gonna change. Those years of being uncomfortable in your own skin is gonna make you grow an even thicker skin. And you're gonna be able to look in the mirror and say, I love you. And you're gonna take over the world. Thank you. Thank you. How long have you been doing drag? I've been doing drag for two and a half years. Does your family support your drag? My family doesn't know that I they don't do drag. Know? Yeah, they think really? I'm not, no gag at all. Like my mom thinks I'm a makeup artist. Has your mother ever seen you in drag ever? Like pictures or anything? Well, I've shown her pictures of me in drag, and she thinks they're like makeup jobs that I did. She doesn't recognize it as me. Stop. Really? Yeah. I guess I'm worried about my mom finding out that I did drag because growing up, I always felt like I could never be the model child that all Asian mothers want. I've already disappointed her so many times in her life. She could even stop talking to me. And... And yeah, I'm just scared of letting her down again. So, Trinity, when you were in Orlando when that situation happened, like, were you freaked out? I mean, I know you're from there. You're talking about Pulse? Yeah. Um, I actually wasn't in um, Orlando at that very moment, but I'm a former Miss Pulse. <gasps> and oh. I entertained there literally the week before on their Latin night, because that happened on their Latin night. So it's scary to think like that literally could have been me. And so immediately my thought is, Call your friends, I'm Oh sure. my God, who do I know? Did you lose a lot of people, Trinity? Well, I didn't know any of the people that actually lost their lives. I knew several of the entertainers that were trapped in the dressing room that escaped. A lady that I worked with in my day job, one of her daughters had just graduated nursing school and then her life was taken over. Oh my God. Oh my God. Like for no reason. I'm so sorry, girl. Well, let me tell you a story about the tragedy. I know you know, you probably knew June a lot of them. June 11, were... I was supposed to perform that night, but I have to um, reschedule. So Kenya Michaels, that is the cast director that night, she said like, it's okay, Mija, we can like um, reschedule you. And then like, 
we were performing in Houston and we get like the text message, like, oh my God, we are here on the bathroom. We can do anything. <gasps> um, there's a guy with a gun like shooting everybody. <gasps> and I'm like, oh my God, are you serious? And unfortunately, one of my friends died on that incident, Martin, and he was like, uh, like two or three hours before, like, Cynthia, you're not here. You're supposed to have a show. That's why I came here tonight. And I'm oh, like, baby, no, 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 no. I just rescheduled. Uh, do you want to go home? And he was like, no, you know what? I'm going to stay. I'm going to have a cute time. I miss you so much. And he was one of my first da dancers like 10 years ago when I started doing drag. So it, it was a very traumatic situation for everybody. We never expect that a tragedy like this happen in our community or happen in our clubs because we thought that we finally built a safe place for our community. We're not safe completely yet, and we're not accepted 100% yet, but we have to continue to live our lives. We can't be stuck in our houses and afraid to go out and live. Preach, girl, preach! What happened in Orlando at Pulse Nightclub was a defining and shocking moment for gay people, and the fact that it was an act of violence against LGBT people of color is not insignificant here. Te amo. Te amo. Love you, girls. Te amo. It's so important as queer entertainers to lead the way. We need to come together and be proudly, visibly queer. And you know what? Also, drag is a brilliant place to work through feelings of pain. Girl, drag is therapy. It yes. is. We can't move backwards. We need to stay strong. I want people to have equal access. I want people to feel like they're a part of the conversation. It's so baffling that like a human would could say, I don't want another human to have the right. same rights as me. Girl, it's fear. You know, my sophomore year, I was openly gay in college, and I ran for student government. And so this, this underground hate group that was on our really small conservative college campus mm -hmm. took it upon themselves to harass me, to break into my dorm room, to like, threaten my life and say they were gonna kill me. What the f I came home, and then there was fag carved in my door. There was uh, paper shoved underneath my door, threatening me. The next night, there was a voice distortion message on my phone that said, you dirty faggot, we're coming to kill you. One of my students came and knocked on the door and said, someone's trying to break into the building. And I picked up the phone, and it was that distorted voice saying, we're, gonna, we're getting inside, we're gonna get you. It was so scary. I can remember thinking. That, that uh, I was in trouble. I had to move out of my dorm room and move into an all-girls dorm and basically and hide for two weeks until they found the person who was- Oh my god. Horrible, I'm so it was, sorry. It was awful. This is during the time period of Matthew Shepard. Matthew Shepard was a college student in Wyoming who went out to a bar, and these monsters picked him up. They beat him to death and uh, hung him on a fence. The Matthew Shepard murder changed my life. This is why I'm involved in gay rights issues, because I don't want anyone to ever feel that way that I felt, thought I was suicidal, or that I wasn't good enough, or that yeah. I didn't belong. That's why I do what I do, because mm -hmm. I never want anyone to feel that way. Yeah. Because it's. It is awful. You know, you don't want to ever feel like you don't matter. We live in a culture right now where divisive rhetoric is winning. It is our responsibility to create the world that we want to live in. Don't let anyone tell you your voice doesn't matter. We all have the power to hopefully exact change. Hey, Plastique. Hi, Rue. I see you at work here on another design challenge. You know, I wanted to do another design challenge to give you girls an opportunity to really show your personality. Okay. And that's been something you've been called out on. Yes, that has been. I'm working on it. Is there something you don't want us to see? Uh, you know, coming here, I had an idea of what American Next Track Superstar should be. Like, should be this polished individual who is always like that. Growing up, I, it wasn't okay in my family to say whatever I want to say or do whatever I want to do because whoever I am was not okay. <laughs> do they know you're here? No. Do they know you are a performer? They do, they do, but it's not something that we talk about in my family. Don't you owe it to them to, to be yourself? 
I do, but in the past when I tried to do that, it didn't end up so well. Yeah. Um, and I've seen a lot of, um, you know, like unhappiness in my back. Resulting of me. <laughs> Resulting of me um, trying to come out of my shell and show them who I am. So all I've known is to just hide it away, you know? What can be seen can hurt them, you know? This is an opportunity for you to show them in a way on your own terms. <laughs> Beautiful and creative. <laughs> and this is your gift to not only them, but to yourself. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Show it. Show it. I will. The tears, the bits that you may be ashamed of, do it here. This is your new home. I'm your new mommy. <laughs> <laughs> you always be my baby. I can't help but get emotional because our family should celebrate and love what their son has become. I'm gonna yeah. see it on that runway. I promise you I like, will. Mm -hmm. I remember that when you were on this competition before, you had experienced some, some bad news. My dad, he had been um, battling cancer for about five years, and he had been in remission and he was fine. But while I was here during filming, went into the hospital, and two days before the cast for season nine got announced, he passed away. And, um, It was really tough <laughs> because my dream for RuPaul's Drag Race was wrapped in the idea of him getting to watch and see me because I know he would have been proud. And for me, the imagery of having this Christian military black father sitting in that audience rooting for a son was all I had ever wanted. When I felt like I was coming to terms with that, a month later to the day, my oldest sister passed away from breast cancer. And she was the one that showed me supermodel of the world. <laughs> Her and I used to strut around that living room. You show sister. Yeah. She encouraged me to be the person that I am today. And I felt really lost because I felt like my two biggest cheerleaders were now gone. Though I miss them both every single day, I feel them with me. I, my dad is half of who I am. I carry him with me everywhere I go, and I know that he's proud. I know that. We well, can honor him by living your best life. Yeah. I'm not completely found, but I'm not as lost as I used to be. Mm. If that makes any sense Ooh, that sounds you. like a gospel song. <laughs> I want to hear Albertina Walker sing that song. <laughs> and you stick with those friends in those places that you and I both know about. Because I think what you're going to find is they will help you. I, I wouldn't be here today without those friends. I wouldn't be here. It's a beautiful moment for me because I needed this meeting. I needed this, and I'm so happy that there's somebody here that I can relate to with this. And it just so happens to be the person that I look up to the most. It's a real, real gift. Thank you. And you can, you can honor that gift by shining <laughs> and sewing and cooking. I'll bring my potato salad. Is that your signature dish? With raisins and MSG. <laughs> it seems as though there's an uncertainty and there's no reason for you to be uncertain. You are right exactly as you are. Just share you with us. Thank you. Um, I do have to say, it is ah, crazy to meet you. <laughs>
Seeing you working in Congress and in solidarity with Congresswoman Tlaib and Congresswoman Omar um, gives me so much hope for our country. My mom immigrated here from Iran and people would tell her to go home and go back where she came from. And when I was young, I hid this part of my heritage for so long. She's an American citizen now. And seeing you standing up for people like my mom gives me so much hope. I'm so thankful that your mother is here and part of our country. Thank you. I was kind of nervous about this outfit because I didn't want anyone to think I was a narcissist, but I do love my, like, my drag character did save my life, so, like, I definitely wanted to, like, touch on that a little bit. I was a really lonely, depressed kid. I was bullied a lot. Same. I didn't exactly know what was wrong with me. I didn't, I'm a black kid. Like, you know, it's just a lot going on. I created her to, like, make me happy. I don't think I would have made it past high school if I didn't find this. Like, it literally made me want to live, like, to push forward and be like, okay, what can I make out of this life, you know? Today we're shooting our, our male half of the photo, our groom side, and then tomorrow we're taking the bride. We're gonna meld them together. I'm excited to see how it's going to look. There's slight anxiousness. I'm not the most masculine guy. I never grow a beard. I don't grow a mustache. You know, growing up, I would sit there on the counter and watch my mom do her makeup. You know, I didn't really watch my dad shave. I was more interested in the lipstick and eyeshadow. You know, doing drag on top of being gay, you know, at 14, it was kind of an escape. It's like, I get to be someone else. I get to be as feminine as I want to be, and I don't get pointed out for it um, or made fun of for it because a lot of people, you know, didn't know it was a boy. So this is going to be just completely different. Hello. Hi. Morgan. My name is Joe. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It was a pleasure. So I'm going to be creating an illusion here today. The story of my life. Just imagine that there's another person next to you. Look right here. One, two, three. Yeah, big motion. Yeah, that's great. My groom is a punk rocker. Just probably rolled out of bed and threw on a leather jacket and a, a tie and came to the chapel. Nice. I smile in my picture because if I have the opportunity of being married with Jessica Wyatt, I am going to be happy. One, two, three. Excellent. Very nice. Perfect. Let's do one just for fun. One, two, three. Excellent. What inspired your choice in outfit? Well, he is a police officer. A little smile. I'm really feeling like a drag king. Like, I'm not feeling like a guy. I'm feeling like I am a girl dressing up like a guy. And you're going to look right here. Two, three. <laughs> Excellent. Sahara Davenport, your presentation was very Swan Lake. Unfortunately, that story does not have a happy ending. I'm sorry, you're up for elimination. Pandora Box, you're safe. Thank you. Raven, you're safe. Thank you. I should have won the challenge. Everyone in that room will agree with me. Morgan McMichaels, <laughs> why are you laughing? I always laugh. It's a nervous thing, I think. I'm sorry, my dear, but you are up for elimination. Two queens stand before me. Prior to tonight, you were asked to prepare a lip sync performance to Carry On by the one and only Martha Wash. Now, this song means a great deal to me because when my mother, who had suffered from a long bout with cancer, finally passed away, I was listening to this song uh, incessantly. It has a lyric, Mama said, never give up. And I've used it as my anthem. I want each of you girls to know that even through adversity or death, love and energy lives forever. For this week's Maxi Challenge, you're gonna need to prance your padded asses off. Hashtag prancing queens. <laughs> In pairs, you'll dance to mashups like the Tango Vogue, 
the Charleston twerk and the country robot. <laughs> and there's just one more little detail. For the first time in Drag Race history, you'll be decked out in half man and half queen drag. Think Dr. Jekyll and Mrs. Hydro Candy. Oh. <laughs> Let's get this disco ball rolling. Now, France, I said. Back in the Form Decor Lounge, we're getting ready for a hoedown. Dancing the country robot, it's Ginger Minge and Trixie Mattel. The Tango Vogue, it's Violet Chachki and Katya. Next up, Trixie Mattel. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Trixie, I think you definitely nailed the runway look. And you kept true to Trixie with that dangling bottom eyelash, so. <gasps> it's uh, a bit campy, <laughs> obviously. <Yeah. laughs> Just, a, Just bit. a bit. Just a little. Your dancing was technically strong. Maybe not so much robot, but you nailed the country. Next up, Ginger Minge. I loved the attempt to butch up when we showed the guy's side. I coached her, I yeah, coached well, her. <laughs> and, and it shows. The dancing this week, it, it seemed a little off for you. Not that you were bad, because you weren't bad. Um, this was so hard for me. This week, I was almost at my complete mental capacity because it was so far outside of my comfort zone. Where are the emotions coming from? My biggest fear is dancing in public because I feel like people are going to judge me poorly for the way that I look and the way things jiggle. I didn't know any of your insecurities, and you could not tell. You were absolutely magnificent. I second that. We just see this beautiful, talented person that's actually having a good time. All right, thank you. Next up, Katya. First, I want to say that I loved seeing you with this black hair, because I know we're used to seeing Katya in red hair and blonde hair. We haven't really gotten the black fantasy yet, I don't think. Ooh, girl. Well, I've had the black <laughs> fantasy many a time, but not from you, Katya. When I saw you come out on the runway, I was like, oh, like you were very coquettish. And then when you turned, and I mean this as a compliment, it was very, like, hot, douchey guy. <laughs> that is amazing. 
All right, V is for Violet. I feel like you are an absolute work of art. Thank you. You are so exquisite. Like, I kind of want to be you. <laughs> is that weird? Have your baby first. Maybe I'm going to name my baby after you. <laughs> We're all a tchotchke. <laughs> there you go, perfect. Technically, your tango, you had just the right tone for it. Some of your extensions, you got really low. It was very tango, so congratulations. Thank you. All right, ladies, it's time to celebrate our queer culture like only you queens can. For this week's maxi challenge, we're throwing a ball, but not just any old ball. We're throwing the gayest ball ever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag gayest ball ever. <laughs> You'll need to work three different looks, each one more gay-tastic than the last. First category is rainbow she better do. We want to see a flaming look inspired by the rainbow flag. Second category is sexy unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> Hooves and horns and queens, oh my. <laughs> Representing the US of gay. It's the RuPaul Rhythmic Gymnastics Team. Give your all, so what if you fall? Legends rise with attitude. If you give your all, so what if you fall? Legends rise with attitude. Storm the judges, give them face. Posture on, hand on the waist. A diva knows her obstacles. Set her back, but don't stop the show. Get your ass on up. Give your all, so what if you fall? Legends rise with attitude. <laughs> Hit the showers, girls. I think my girls are doping. <gasps> Can you feel the love? Let's get this ball rolling. Category is Rainbow She Better Do. First up, Shea Coulee. Graffiti Nefertiti. I decided to go in a little bit of a different direction than do a dress that is graffiti, and I'm just feeling this look so much. Tag, you're it. <laughs> Sasha Velour. Oh, gorgeous. Color blocking perfection. I'm giving a little nod to The Wizard of Oz and the importance of Dorothy to the gay community. Oh, honey, I am home. <laughs> <laughs> Careful before someone drops a house on you. <laughs> I'm filing for section great. <laughs> Alexis Michelle. Rainbow bright. Yes! <laughs> this look is literal pride flag. Bright, loud, colorful, stripy. Taste the rainbow. Mm. Trinity Taylor. That gives whole new meaning to strap on. <laughs> I'm giving you gay rainbow with a dash of dark lady. I wonder what's at the end of her rainbow. I just want her ass. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Peppermint. Ooh, I wonder if her rug matches her drapes. <laughs> My look is a classic pride look. I'm a classic beauty with a classic booty. And I'm working it like there is no other. This look brought to you by Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> Category is Sexy unicorn, Shea Coulee. Yes, she's the black horse of this competition. Fifty Shades of Shea. <laughs> I'm giving you dark and lovely stallion. You could just call me May Coulee. Thank it. Oh, does she make you unicorny? <laughs> <laughs> Sasha Velour. Oh. oh. It's the Chronicles of Dragnia, <laughs> Lord of the Hoofs. Yes! yes. <laughs> When I think of a unicorn, I think of medieval tapestries. I'm just selling that fantasy beast. The tip of her horn is bleeding. I think this is a period costume. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis Michelle. Now, she's a real hoofer. I am a glittery gold unicorn. Look at these hooves. You know what they say about big hooves, don't you? Now, that's what I call a fairy tale. She's really feeling her oats. <laughs> Trinity Taylor. She's got so much energy, it's like Lisa Crank. <laughs> it's every little gay boy's pony fantasy. Bubble gum, cotton candy, my little pony, and I live. Yeah, shake those tail feathers. <laughs> Peppermint. 
Horn razor. <laughs> my sexy unicorn is a space unicorn. I start to realize that my garment is a little baggy in some places, so I have to kind of move very strategically. Unicorn? I don't remember eating unicorn. <laughs> Hey, All Stars. Hey, hey Mom. Will. Now, this week we are paying tribute to one of the greatest stars Hollywood has ever produced, Judy Garland. Yes, yes. ma'am. Now, in the past, asking, are you a friend of Dorothy's, was a secret code to help closeted people identify each other. Really? Yeah. And still today, I call my closest friends my best Judys. So, for this week's Maxi Challenge, you'll be making over your best Judy's. Ah! What? Oh, I heart the thank you. Oh. <laughs> Here she is, she's my best Judy, the scarecrow to my Dorothy. Here she is, she's my best Judy, she would never drop a house on me. Chug, chug, chug it down the yellow brick road. She always in a rainbow. Well, happy bluebirds fly. We'll be singing swan into the clouds. Oh, fly. Come along, you're my best, Judy. Look out there, a star is born. Sing a song, you're my best, Judy. We'll name it Liza. Shall we? Or Lord, ah. Come rain or shine. She's my best, Judy. Always there to share the love. Chug, chug, chug it down the yellow brick road. She always in a rainbow. Well, happy bluebirds fly. We'll be singing swan into the clouds. Oh, fly. Come along, you're my best, Judy. Look out there, a star is born. Sing a song, you're my best, Judy. We'll name it Liza. Shall we? Or Lord, ah. We're all a pie. You're my best, Judy. Much more than Minnelli. Before me are two beautiful queens. Tonight, my two best girls are going to lip sync my new single, Cover Girl, Put the Bass in Your Walk. This is your very last chance to impress me and walk away with the prize. The time has come for you to lip sync for your life. Good luck, and for the last time, girls, don't f it up. I love you. I love you too. Incredible. 
both of you. And I've made my decision. The winner of RuPaul's Drag Race, the next drag superstar. is BB. Ah! 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 Congratulations, baby! Ah! Abo loco! Congratulations, sweetheart. Come on, stand up. Ay, loca, please, come on, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. You deserve it, baby. Come on. Stand up. Working. <laughs> Working. Oh my god. Oh my god. You deserve it, baby. Nina Flowers. Congratulations. Yes. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You have made this competition so much better by being a part of it. Take my love and my admiration with you wherever you go. Thank you so much for this wonderful experience. I didn't want the prizes, but I want other things. I want great experience. I want great friends. I'm going home a winner. I don't want to cry. <laughs> I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you. BB, this is your moment. I pass the reins on to you, my dear. It will be your job to spread the love, the message, the beauty of being the next drag superstar. Right now I'm overwhelmed because I can't believe that it, it finally happened. Like a dream that you've been dreaming all the time coming to life. My queen, remember, if you can't love yourself, how are you going to love somebody else? Now walk. For the first time in my life, I can say that I'm a beautiful person. It's taken a long time, and it's, a, it's been a treacherous journey. But I'm in this moment right now, and it, and it feels so great. And I'm proud of it. I'm very proud. Thank you, Raja. Two beautiful queens stand before me. Ladies, this is your last chance to impress me, walk away with the title of America's next drag superstar. My heart has never beat faster in my life. I felt like it was gonna jump out of my chest. The time has come for you to lip sync for your life. I'm so excited. It might be me that's the next drag superstar. So let's get this lip sync on. Good luck. And for the last time, don't f it up. They try to keep you down, but there's no denying you're our champion. The greatest of them all, you're champion. Never gonna fall, you're champion. Still standing tall, you're champion. And you'll always be a hero. Oh, 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 oh. I'm lip syncing the song the way that I lip sync. I'm lip syncing this as Manila. All eyes are on me, and it's about me really, really hitting it and doing it Raja style. Ladies, 
I've made my decision. The winner of RuPaul's Drag Race, America's next drag superstar, is Raja. <laughs> Manila, you are an inspiration. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Now, sashay away. Raja, my queen, I bow to thee. <laughs> Along with this title, I can use it now to talk to kids who had no clue that you could be a star. I just want to let them know that it's all right to be a social misfit. It's okay to think outside of the box and think greater than what you know. Now, prance, I say. Prance, my queen. All hail the queen. Jinx Monsoon. Growing up, I was continually an outcast. And in my teen years, I discovered drag. So even though I was hurting at home, I was living on stage. My whole life, I've danced to the beat of a different drum. And when I came here, I took the critiques and I was able to adapt and grow while still being true to who I am as a performer. And anything else was just water off a duck's back. <laughs> Thank you, Jinx. The winner of RuPaul's Drag Race, America's next drag superstar is... Jinx Monsoon. Bob the Drag Queen. I have statistically done the best in this competition, and you reward the person who's done the best with the highest reward. I don't just do what I do for me. I literally do it for anyone who can come within the range of my obnoxious, raspy voice. <laughs> I serve the people, I serve the community, and more than just doing stand-up comedy, and actually getting my hands and feet into the dirt of the community and helping it grow, because the community has helped me grow, and it's made me who I am today. Thank you. The winner of RuPaul's Drag Race, America's next drag superstar, is Bob the Drag Queen. <laughs> Anything you have to say? Yes, I have too much to say, but I'm gonna keep it to one thing. Take whatever you love about yourself and walk into the world by Simone. <laughs> 
<laughs> what advice do you have for your three-year-old self? <laughs> Reggie. <laughs> You're gonna grow up and you're gonna believe all the things that people say about you. That there is something wrong with you. That you can't be black and gay. That you can't be feminine and be successful. But you're gonna hate yourself. And please don't make the mistake I did. Love yourself. And then you're gonna go and live your dream one day and meet somebody who inspired you. And she's gonna call you a star. <laughs> and you're gonna do, do everything they said that you couldn't do. And you're gonna be great. Thank you. The time has come to crown our queen. Ladies, I've made my decision. The winner of RuPaul's Drag Race America's next drag superstar is... Is there anything you'd like to say? Well, I told y'all not to let the smooth taste fool you. <laughs> <laughs> now, friends, my queen. All right. Friends. somebody else. Can I get an amen up in here? Amen. All right, now let the music play. Do you want everything RuPaul's Drag Race at your fingertips? then head over to YouTube now and subscribe to the RuPaul's Drag Race channel. And you will get all the episodes of everything you ever want, including brand new episodes of Whatcha Packin'. Hi.